But what I have here, um, a nine lead motor, I guarantee you that that camera image, um, you can't see the numbers on the leads, so I didn't do, I didn't bother covering up the numbers on the leads, but let's say you had a motor um, where you had no numbers on the wires. You, you opened it up and the guy who wired it previously to you, he cut the wires back, he cut the numbers off or whatever happened. Um, so in this scenario, this motor had all ring terminals on that. And, uh, what I like to do, I don't want to cut those ring terminals off, so I made this dielectrically safe terminal strip with a piece of plywood. Um, I'm only using 24 volts here, so I'm not worried about you know um, this. But I, I did this just for demonstration purposes. You don't have to screw those leads into terminals. You can you can just leave them hang out of the motor. But I did that so the camera here can see them better. Um, but if you do have a motor and you have to identify the nine leads on the motor, I kind of set it up myself. Um, what I have here, and I'll show you, is I've got a little bit of a, a suicide extension cord here uh, with a 24-volt uh, doorbell transformer. And I got that going to this terminal strip also. And again, I'm doing this to keep this kind of organized so you can see it. But this red and white wire, that's the 24 volts. And I got my you know, high-class powered switch here where I'm just going to plug it into my extension cord to turn it on and turn it off um, during this, during this uh, testing process. So I took, I just randomly took all the motor leads and I, I, I screwed them to this block just so I, I could keep them organized in front of you guys. Um, and then I took them to this terminal strip. So then when I got, I want to make some connections and apply 24 volts um, to these windings, I can switch it around quickly with this terminal easier than this this block of wood. Again, I just did this for demonstration purposes for you guys. Um, in the real world, I would just clip leads right onto those wires and I wouldn't even bother with the terminal strip. Um, but you know, the first thing you got to figure out. Uh, oh, one more thing here. If you notice, I've got three pieces of red phase tape, three pieces of black phase tape, three pieces of brown phase tape, and three pieces of orange phase tape, pre-cut and set aside for me to use. Um, and that's kind of something to tell me that okay, I'm gonna need this no matter if I have a Delt or a wide motor. I'm gonna need this colored tape to to uh, to pre-identify wires. Um, as I'm figuring this out. So the first thing we got to do when we, when we you got to figure out identifying leads on a motor is you have to find, to find out do I got a Y connected motor or do we have a Delta connected motor? And from, from your past learning is that, okay, if I have three circuits where two wires have continuity or, or ohm reading and then one set of three wires, that's a Y connected. So you have one, two, three, four circuits in the motor. If you have three sets of three windings, three sets of three wires, um, where you have resistance or continuity between them, then you know you have a delta connected motor. And the, the process I'm gonna use um, to do this with either way um, will work. So either if it's a delta or a Y, we can use the same process. Um, it's just a matter of connecting it differently. Um, so I have one of these two motors. I can do it for that process. If I have, if I had the other motor, I would obviously do that, but I didn't have one. Um, and something to think about as we start this is that, you know, no matter what, if you have a delta or a Y motor, that A phase winding, be it one, four, and seven here, or one, four, and seven, and two here, those two coils are wound on top of the same core material in the same slots inside that motor. So they act just like a transformer. So if you energize a primary of a transformer, you're gonna get current and voltage induced in the secondary of the transformer. And that's what I'm gonna be using here to show you how to identify these leads of this motor um, once we get to that point. So every, I mean, everything coming good on the audio, you guys can hear me okay with this? Yes, sir. All right. So anytime you're going to figure out the leads of a motor, you know, you just start and start, take your meter, you put it on ohms and you start testing from wire to wire. And you're going to be looking for those, either the, the three or the two. Oh, and there I got a reading there. So I got 13.2 ohms and I've got colors here. So from this black wire here to this orange wire here, I've got that 13.2 ohms and I keep going. 
and I keep going and I keep going and I got nothing else. So now let me leave my lead on the orange or on this wire here at 13.2 and let me check everything else. And okay, so that's only two wires with 13.2. I got no, no continuity or no resistance reading with any other leads. So that immediately tells me, since I have a pair of wires, that I have a Y-connected motor. So now I don't know if that's one or four, two or five, or three or six. I just know that that's a pair, and I have 13.1 ohms as my base resistance for this motor. So if I take and I write down that I have 13 ohms as my base resistance, and if everybody thinks about when you do motor, motor winding connections, that base resistance becomes a an important thing to verify if you've got it wired correctly or not correctly. So I'm going to take those two wires and I'm just going to randomly assign a color to them. So I'm going to say that's orange and orange. And I didn't do that for any specific reason. I just picked that color base tape so that I know that that's a pair of wires that have continuity in common with one another. And you can wrap it around the wires. I'm just putting it on a stake on here. But if you were doing this in real life, I would wrap orange around both of those wires. I don't know what number T1, T4, T5, T2, T5, T3, T6. I just know that that's a pair of wires. So then I could take another lead here and I can go down and here, there I got the 13.2, but I could just keep going. So going back to that from this red wire here to this white wire here, I've got another pair. It's 13.2, it's the base resistance, so I know I got another pair. So I'm going to just take and I'm going to give those red phase tape. And I'm just, I'm just identifying that as being a pair of wires. So I've got one pair, now I've got a second pair that's got that same base resistance, 13.1 13 or 13.2. So I got pair, a pair here that's 1 and 4, 2 and 5, or 3 and 6. And I got a pair here that's one and four, two and five, or three and six. I don't know which one's which, but I know that it's a pair. So now I go to this next terminal, and then I go here, and all of a sudden, oh, I got a reading of 26.1. Well, 26.1 is two times the base resistance. So if you think about these windings, is that you've got 13 ohms in series with 13 ohms. That tells me that I'm in, I'm in that Y connection. So here I've got 26.1 ohms. And I go to the next terminal, oh, I got 26 ohms again. So that tells me that this wire, this wire, and these two wires are my Y connection. So if you can all see that there's 26.2 ohms there, 26.1 ohms there, and 26.2 ohms or 26.1 ohms there. So those three wires, this blue here, this yellow here, and this black with a red stripe, are my Y connection. So I'm going to label those with black tape. So that's my three wires that are all uh, have the same, are part of the same circuit. So now I've got that black wire or that black tape identifying those as being the three of the Y connection. So that's 26.0. Oh, so I'm reading through these two connected in series, those two connected in series, and those two connected in series. And that's what's giving me that 26 ohms. So then this last pair should have continuity, and it does, and I have 13 ohms there. So then I could take my last color here, and I got brown. Um, I'll put that on there to identify that as my last pair. Now I got three pieces of colored tape left. And this is where the ohm meter gets, gets put away, and um, the voltmeter comes out. So if you would just hook up this motor and say, oh, well, I've got a pair, I've got a pair, I've got a pair. But if you would accidentally hook up this motor, say, three and six with seven, you're connecting C phase to A phase, and it's not going to run so good. So you have to make sure that you get wire T1 and T4 with T7, and the polarity has to be that it's additive. Because if you think about it, if you had two coils wound on top of each other, and you had the magnetic field of one going in one direction, and the magnetic field of the other one going in the opposite direction, those two magnetic fields would cancel out, and the counter EMF generated between them would end up being a short. 
So if you had T4 and T1 backwards, you're going to create a short. So you have to make sure that you have the right coil with the right coil and that they're, they're additive polarity. Otherwise, you're actually going to short out the phase or you're going to have cross phases. You could have one part of the motor going forward, the other part of the motor going backwards, and it's going to make all kinds of noises that you don't want to hear. So now we got to figure out what pair of wires goes with what one of these two. Well, since if you look at this drawing here, those three are wires seven, eight, nine, and really doesn't matter. We can arbitrarily assign those seven, eight, nine. So if I take a Brady label number here, I can just take and label one of those seven, one of those eight, and one of those nine. So that's what I'm going to do. And I don't know what the actual numbers are here. But I'm going to call that wire number seven, the next wire number eight of that three, and the last not one of those three is number nine. So this is where you can arbitrarily make that decision that that's seven, eight, and nine. Now, if you have a motor where you've got a couple numbers, you know, you don't have all blank wires, you've got a couple numbers, you need to find the rest, you may be able with an ohm meter do this base resistance check and say, oh, I've got a seven, I've got a three, I've got a four, and then you could figure it out. You might not have to go any further. But right here, I still don't know what pair of wires goes with seven. So I don't know if it's the red that's one at four, the orange that's one at four, or the brown that's one at four. And I don't know which is two and five and which one's three and six. So we've got to figure out which one of those pairs of wires go with what coil. And this is where this little transformer comes into play. So I'm going to take now, and I'm going to hook up 24 volts AC to that Y connection. And I'm using 24 volts AC because it's nice and safe, and I don't have to worry about PPE and anything like this. On a bigger on a bigger motor in the real world, you could actually hook up 120 volts three uh, 120 volt single phase um, right to that winding. And a bigger motor with bigger windings. It will, you know, it will be able to handle the current, um, you know, for a short period of time. I'm not saying to hook it up there for a half hour, um, but you could actually. So we're gonna, I'm gonna hook up here to 24 volts AC, and I'm just hooking it up from seven to eight. So from wire seven, it's going to the, the line one of my 24 volts AC, and wire eight is going to line two of my 24 volts AC. So I'm just hooking up 24 volts AC. So if I if you look at this drawing here, let me change colors. So I'm going to be applying 24 volts from terminal seven to terminal eight, and that's going to that's going to create a 12 volt drop on this coil, and about a 12 volt drop AC on that coil. Then within transformer action, I'm going to get an induced current, and it's going to be right around two volts. The turns ratio isn't really nice here. And this, I'm going to get about two volts. But since I only have current going through this coil and this coil, this is going to have no current in it. Therefore, I should get next to nothing or zero volts there. That's going to tell me then that whatever coil, that pair that I measure that doesn't have any voltage induced on it, that's the pair that goes with nine. So I'll show you an example here. I'm going to plug this transformer in. I got the 24 volts now applied. And so if I go and I turn my meter here to volts, and I'm going to check here. Yep, I got 26.9 volts coming out of the transformer. So I got 26.9. Let me go right up on the screws here. So from seven to eight, we got 26.9 volts. So now if I check this orange pair of wires, I got 1.8 volts. If I check the red pair of wires, I've got 639 millivolts or 0.6 volts. And if I check the brown wires, I got 1.6 or 1.7 volts. So the brown wire is getting voltage induced to a note into it. The orange wire is getting voltage induced to it. But the red wires do not have voltage induced to it. So this, this indicates to me that this pair, this red pair, that's the pair that goes with nine. So I'm going to take this last little piece of red tape, and I'm going to put that red tape on nine. So now I know that the pair, red pair goes with terminal nine. So this here, I got no nothing there. I got about two volts there. 
and I've got about two volts there, but I got nothing on the red pair. So that tells me if I power to seven to eight, I got two volts there, two volts there, nothing there. That's, that's right because there's no current going through coil nine. So now I'm going to turn my power off and I'm going to move my jumper. Now I'm going to power eight to nine. So I'm going to take it off of seven and I'm going to go to, to nine. Now I'm powering eight to nine. So I should have the pair that I just had, I should have that two volts on that now. And then the other pairs, I should have um, two volts and then one pair should have no volts. So I turn it, I'm turning the power back on. And let me check here, I've got my full 26.6 volts there. So from eight to nine, I've got 26.6 volts. So then on that brown pair, I've got 2.2 .2 volts. On the red pair, we should have 2.7 volts. Now on the orange pair, we got 363 millivolts. So that orange pair is not, is not getting any voltage induced to it. The red pair is having voltage induced to it. And we know we've got power current on nine now, so that should have the 2.7 volts. On the brown pair, we now have 2.2 .2 volts. So that's that's the that's telling me that that's that's got current through the other coil. So the pair the the pair that do not have voltage, this orange pair, that's the pair that's associated with seven because seven is not connected. So that's orange. So I'm going to take orange now and I'm going to put that orange tape on that terminal seven wire. So now I know that the orange pair is associated with seven. The red pair is associated nine. Well, I could verify this and guarantee it now. If I take and I change that wire so that I do not power eight, but I power seven and nine, then that last pair should not have voltage induced on it. So I'm going to here now turn on power from seven to nine. So I'm going from seven to nine. The pair associated with eight should have no volts induced into it. So here we go, powering it up. Check my voltage here, seven to eight. We've got 14 volts. What did I do? What did I lose here? Something loose. Seven to eight. I'm gonna get 14 volts all of a sudden. But then if I go on the orange pair, I got 1.7 on the red pair, I got 1.7, and on the brown pair, I've got next to nothing. So then I know that terminal, the brown pair is the pair that's associated with number eight. All right. So I have a quick question. Ask it. So if, say, if this was wired up before, and your orange, the one that you have the orange tape on, the first one in the row on the terminal block, if somebody but, used that, say, as one before, it doesn't matter as long as you keep them in the right, like, respectively keeping them together with their coils, right? Like, you could rename another one one as long as you keep it respective to the T1, 4, and 7. Exactly, exactly. Okay. As long as as long as you get one, four, and seven together with the right pair, they may have previously been two, five, and eight, or they may previously have been three, six, and nine. You just reassign them. When you arbitrarily assign seven, eight, and nine, you may have changed all the numbers in the entire motor. If you have numbers to start with, you could try to correlate it with the numbers that were there to start with. But you could literally, if you if you really, really wanted to, and I'm not suggesting that you do it, but if you really wanted to, you could just rip all the numbers off and start from scratch. Gotcha. Okay. That makes sense. So the last the last step or the last stage of this is I've now got to figure out which one's one and which one's four. I've got the pair. So seven is orange. I've got an orange pair that goes with seven. I don't know which one's one and which one's four. Well, if you think about a transformer, if I hook H2, let me just move this over. If I hook H2 to X1 of that transformer, and I measured with a voltmeter here and applied 24 volts here, 
that secondary being additive polarity would tell me that, okay, H1, H2, X1, X2, that if I read more volts than I start with, it's additive. If I read less volts than I start with, then if I had H1, H2, and I did X2, X1, and I connected, think of buck boost transformer connections, 24 volts applied. And if I read less than 24, then that's reverse polarity, and I've got those leads backwards. So this is where this is what we could do here now. So I got my cord unplugged. I'm going to apply power to seven and eight, and I'm going to put a jumper in now between the seven terminal and one of the orange wires. And it doesn't really matter which of the two orange wires because if we read more voltage, it's additive polarity. If we read less voltage, it's subtractive polarity. So I'm going to just pick that orange term, that orange pair, pick one of those wires. So now I have my 24 volts AC going from seven to eight. So from seven to eight, I'm applying the 24 you volts. You got one of those wires on the number nine, not number eight. Oops, let me change that to eight. Thank you. Now I got it from seven to eight. Thank you. So now I've got, I'm powering seven to eight and I connected this pair that's associated with seven in series. So if I measure, if I turn on my AC volts now, so now I should have my 24 volts here, 26.9. And then I've got going to my seven and eight, I've got 26.9. Now I'm going to lift the lead off of seven. I'm leaving the lead. Let me put the black on eight just to kind of give you some reference here. So eight is my common because that was my starting point. I should have the same voltage. That's in series. So we got the same voltage. So now if this is higher, it's additive. If it's lower, it's subtractive. So here I had 26.7 volts. Here I had 26.7 volts. Here I've got 25.6 volts. So this voltage is subtracting. That means I've got this backwards. I've got currently connected T1 and T4, and I'm measuring with that voltmeter, or that with T8, but it's the, I'm measuring less voltage. That means I've got this T1 and T4 backwards. So what I thought was T1 here in my left, the red probe, is actually T4. So now I can actually take that wire and then label that T4. So this wire becomes T4. And the other wire becomes T1 because I got less voltage. So then this one becomes T1. So now I've got one, four, and seven labeled. So I've got this one became one. Let me put it on the tape on here so you can see a little better on the camera. So this one became one. And the other one became four. Because I ended up with less voltage. If I would end up with more voltage, then I would flip one and four. So let me unplug this, and I'm going to move that jumper now. Between eight, terminal wire eight, and I'm going to get the polarity of the wire, the pair associated with eight. So that's the brown pair. And again, I'm doing this with terminals in, in the field. You can take a, some clips, a couple wire nuts, a couple screws, either way. So now I'm, I'm going to take this one that I have eight, and I'm going to connect one of the brown pair in series. So that's this guy right here. That's one of the brown pair. And 
Okay, and then we're going to turn on the 24 volts. Now seven becomes my base reference. And from seven to eight, we got 26.8 volts or 26.9 volts. And then seven of that terminal, that's, that's in series, that's connected to the same terminal here. So that's the same voltage. So now if we have more voltage, it's additive polarity. If we have less voltage, it's subtractive. If you see there now, it's 28 volts. So we started with, So I got 13. Where's my power? 26.9. 26.9. And I'm going up to 28. So this is additive. So the end of this terminal, that's the wires associated with 9. The end is T3. The one that's jumper together is T6. So now I can number those, six and three. So the end where we measured the higher voltage. How are we going to numbers associated with eight? Say that again. Aren't we doing the numbers associated with the eight, not the nine, the brown? Trivia. Oh, so wouldn't okay. it be like T2 and T5? Yeah. You are correct. So, yep, that's the problem. Yeah. So, that would be two. This one would be two. And then the other one is going to be five. So, then this one is five. So, I've got two, five, one, four. Seven, eight, nine. The last pair we have to figure out is the red pair. The red pair is the pair associated with nine. So now I can move my two jumpers to that terminal that's associated with nine. That is this black with the red stripe here. And then I just pick the one, one of those red pair. And it doesn't matter because if I get additive, it's one way. If it's subtractive, it's the other way. So I'll just pick one of those. All right. So now I've got one of the 24 AC on nine, the other one of the 24 AC on seven. And I jump to this other red pair here. So I'm ready. Image on that. Power's on. So if I put my reference probe on the seven and my red probe on nine, I get the 26.7 volts. Then I go to the red pair here where I got it connected. I have the 26.7 volts. So now if it's more, it's additive. There it's less, so it's subtractive. So the lead, the lead that my red probe is on is then going to be terminal six. And the lead that my black probe is on here. Oops. So here I had 26.7 going to nine. Here we got 26.7. That's that's connected in series right now. That's the middle between the two coils. Here it becomes subtractive. So this lead is six. This lead is three. So the one that the red terminal, the red probe is on right now is six. The other one is three because it's the same voltage as my initial. So let me mark those. So this one becomes six, and then the other one becomes three. And then you can wire this up and, and run it, 
and test it, and then you want to check chance of all these phases um, to make sure that they're equal when you test it. Now, before I take take this apart and wire it up and test it, I want to show you the DC method or the August hand method um, of doing this. And the the way you do this is you you can't use a digital meter for this. You need an analog meter. And you're actually looking at the counter EMF pulses in that motor. So I'm going to take these jumpers out. Because we're going to use this DC battery to do this. Now, it goes along the same process and principle here is that once you find 7, 8, and 9, you can label 7, 8, and 9. But the difference is, is now instead of applying AC and looking at polarity, I'm going to apply a DC pulse. And I'm going to look at the needle deflection on the meter. So if I set that, uh, let me set that meter right here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so you can see the needle of, of the meter a little bit better. So on this, I'm going to, I'm just going to show you for reference. I already know these numbers. So I'm going to hook the black on four and the red on one. I would not have known that previously. But now here's, I took a, I took a Milwaukee battery. I got a couple little leads stuck into the, the DC plus and minus. I did test it with a meter that the plus is the red is the plus and the black is the minus. So you've got to make sure you use the polarity and your meter to verify that plus is plus and minus is minus. But now if I take, let me slide this over just a little bit so you can see all of these. So now if I take and I pulse, watch this meter. I've got it on the lowest DC volt range. But if I put the plus on seven and the minus on nine, you see the needle move backwards and I let it go. Oops. So plus is on seven, minus is on nine, and it goes plus and then minus. Plus and then minus. So I'm actually looking at the counter EMF pulses of induced current. So seven, eight, I should get the same thing. And if I go from eight to nine, you get very little pulse. So when I go from seven to eight, I get a pretty good pulse. From seven to nine, I get a pretty good pulse. But from eight to nine, I don't get much of a pulse at all. It's kind of hard to tell with that meter. And that's where I kind of prefer the, uh, the AC voltage method. Um, but in the in the blackboard in the reading um, in the video they, the the guy shows it um, he's got a meter that reads a little better resolution on the low volts DC the needle moves a little more and you can see that so if you don't have a transformer and you don't have AC power you can actually do it you know if you're up on a piece of equipment you don't you know you can actually do it with a with a battery and a, a meter like this you don't have to do it with the AC um, so there's multiple ways to determine this. So now, let's wire this thing up. So now I've got all my leads numbered, and I've got my three power leads coming in here from my three-phase phase converter, my VFD. So now for a Y connection, we go one, terminal one goes to seven. So one and seven go to a phase. So I'm just going to pick a phase here. So I've got some screws and nuts here. So 
So seven and one go to A phase. And then two and eight are gonna go to B phase. That's my two. Yep. So two and eight go to B phase. Ah, come on, get together. Someone cut the screw with the side cover so it's not stuck. Give a little emphasis here. Right tool for the wrong job. And then three and nine are going to go together. So three, that's six. We don't want to screw that up. I got nine in my hand. Nine and three are going to go to C phase. And then four, five, and six connect together to make that final Y. I got one volt left. Look at that. So I got four, five, and six. I got left over. That's correct. Yeah, another screw they cut off the side cutters. And of course, rubber and cambric are in order. Um, we're in a COVID situation, so a little 10 flex 1700 never heard a little quick tape here so I could turn it on and run it. Aren't you supposed to put that, uh, what's that one stuff? That brown tape looking, carburite, it's not sticky. Yeah, that's what I said. Cambric, uh, cambric and rubber tape would be actually the right way to do it, but since uh, we're in a COVID situation, I don't have any. I've got fiberglass high high temperature tape, but I don't have Cambridge on me, so giving them a, a. So now I bring this guy over. Let me back the camera on a little bit. So what I have here, this cord going to the motor, is coming out of this. Single phase, the three phase, 120 to 240 volt VFD. So just like in your application that you guys did um, in the homework. So I've got my one motor wired up, power up my drive, and hopefully it doesn't trip my GFI because that's happened before. So it's actually showing the initial parameters I see it better with the light off. 
So when you first power up the drive, it displays the initial parameters. This is set for keypad control. So here's my speed reference. Start the motor. It's going to 24 hertz. I could turn it up all the way to 60 hertz. And then anytime you do this, you should take an ammeter and verify that all three phases are reading the same current. Now, this is going to be hard to do on this because this motor isn't drawing much. But here I got 1.2, 1 amp, 0.9 amps on A phase. Point eight, point nine amps on B phase, or the red phase. I don't know which one it is. You can see. And then all three phases are balanced. So we got the numbers right. Now it, I can tell you right now, seven eight nine wasn't seven eight nine. That's actually marked in the leads. It was something totally different. All right, let me turn the recording off and then I can open it up for questions here.